This video is sponsored by Stream. Stream is an SDK that allows you to easily build chat apps similar to the apps that you use in your everyday life, such as WhatsApp. It allows you to build customizable UI that can adapt to any use case. They have chat features such as file uploads, GIFs, and reactions, which can be seen on the demo examples within their page. Stream makes it easy for developers to quickly add real-time messaging to applications. Try out their API with the link in the description box. Small teams and individuals can sign up for a free account under their maker account with no credit card required. Hey, and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at an example where we can refactor an app that has everything within the view out into an MVVM application. Also, we're going to look at how we can add in navigation where if you tap on a cell, it will actually push to a screen showing more information about the item. So let's get into that now. Now, what we're going to do is actually just look at the basic breakdown of this project and how we have it set up. So if I actually run this on the Swift UI preview, you'll notice that we just have an app here that just simply lists out users in a list. And this is just using the JSON placeholder type code um, API. Now, what we have here is we have everything within one file. So our views are in one file, our logic for fetching our uses in one file. So everything is here, nothing's been split up. You can even see our models are at the top here. So if you're building a very simple application, then this is fine. But what happens when you have a project that actually needs to scale and you actually need to separate out your code and unit test it, for example, this isn't the best way to go about it. All of our logic relating to fetching our users is actually tied directly to our content view. So we can't actually specifically just unit test this if we wanted to. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can actually use MVVM within this view and refactor out the bits that we need to. So MVVM stands for model view view model and we'll go through each one and the purpose that they serve. So let's actually first to start off with model. So the model is actually meant to be done and not know any of the business logic that the application performs. So when I talk about business logic, I'm talking about any logic where you either A, read or write to some kind of data source. Now our model is meant to be used to just house and represent the data that our app needs for its UI and for the view model to even manipulate or return it. So the relevant bits in our file here is our, is our model, is our structs that we use to represent our data. If you just scroll up here, you'll see that we have our user, address, company, and geo. And it's also worth noting that if you want to follow along with this tutorial, then you can actually download the source code from my GitHub to follow along with the starter project. So what we're going to do is create a new file called model and then we're going to move our model out into those files. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So we've done that now. So we don't really need this to be within the file where our view is because this model here just represents a data that's been decoded from the API response that we get back. So as you can see, our model file is just simple and barely has any kind of logic. Now, the next thing that we want to move on to is our view model. Like I said before, this is where the business logic happens, where it uses our model to give the view the data it needs. Now, in our case, the view model is where we fetch the data from the service and convert it into an array of our users. Now, it's also worth noting that, like I said before, in a SwiftUI app, what we had before isn't actually a bad thing. But the reasons why I'm separating this out is because, let's say I want to isolate and unit test the networking logic is working fine. I can do this now because it's not tied directly to the view. So what we're going to do is create a new file called view model and we're going to move that logic into there. So let's do that now. All right, so what we have here is our user view model and what we have here is specifically the business logic that I mentioned before. So we've essentially just moved out the logic that we had here and we've now put that within our actual view model here. So if I actually just put these side by side so you can actually see what I'm talking about. As you can see, we've essentially just moved everything within our content view out into our view model so if we just look at our view model that we have here we just have a function called fetch users same and we're just using the same code to call a network request to get our users back from the service but this time we're now rather than us returning we're actually just discarding the value that we get back from our json decoder so another thing to note as well is that our class here is actually been marked final because we don't want any other class to subclass it and we've also marked it as an observable object so that our view can actually listen to the results of 
this fetch users. So what I like to do with my functions is, with especially with async await, is that I actually like to house this source of truth within the view model, and then I actually just like to throw any errors out from the view model so that the view can handle it. So you'll see here that within our decoder as well, we're actually just discarding the value. But what we want to do here instead is, like I said before, we want to add in some kind of property for our view to listen to if the fetch users was actually successful. So let's add this in now. So within our content view, if you scroll up, we actually want to take out these two properties and move them into our view model. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. Because we're now working with an object that isn't a view, we can't actually use the state property wrappers. So instead, we have to actually use the published property wrappers. And if you want to learn more about the published property wrapper and observable object, then you should check out my video that I did called Breaking Down Published and Observable Objects in Swift UI. So we actually don't want to make these just private because what we actually want to do is kind of expose this to our view so that it can listen to updates. Now, both of these properties, we don't actually want our view to be able to write to them. We just want them to be able to just listen to the changes. So we only want to make modifications to both of these within the context of this view model. So rather than making these private on its own, we can actually use a access control level called private set, which means that you can actually read these properties from outside the view model but you can only change them from within the scope of this class. So let's change this now. Okay, cool. And then what we want to do is that within our fetch users function on line 20, we now want to assign the result of our decoder to our users here. So now what this will do is update our source of truth so our view can listen to the changes that happen to this user property. And then we've also got this property called is loading. So we want to add in some logic to actually handle showing the is loading and setting that to true and also setting it to false. So we'll do that here. Cool. So what we're saying here is that when the function gets called, we'll set is loading equal to true to say that it is loading. But we're now using this new keyword here called defer. And what defer essentially means is that once this function has reached the end of its current scope, it will actually make sure that it executes this here. So we'll make sure that when we get to the end of our function, we actually set is loading back to false because we don't want to show the loading screen no more. We want to show our list and navigation view. So now our view model handles all of the business logic needed that we need to use within our view. So our view should only have the responsibility of showing the current state of our business logic, which is why we've marked these as private sets so it can listen to the changes. And we've also got a function here that throws so that it can show an error to say something's gone wrong. So think of the view almost like a layer on top of the view model where it listens to updates and reacts. That is it. It should just reflect the state of our view model. So technically, just like our model, the view is also dumb as well. So we need to actually link our view to the view model by using a state object. And you can learn more about state object too in my video, state object in SwiftUI. So let's, let's actually add this link in now. So I'm just gonna close this panel. And then within here, we're going to just do a bit of typing. Cool. So we've added a state object into our content view and this is us just creating a single instance of our user's view model. Now our view has a source of truth because it can actually listen to the changes within this view model as well. So now we've created an instance of this. Now let's actually link the properties that our view cares about so that it can listen to those updates. So we're going to, so we're going to do this bit of a refactoring together. So rather than this being just is loading, we actually want this to be VM dot is loading and if we scroll down in our task we don't really want to do this anymore so we want to remove that and we don't need to do this um self dot users anymore so instead we just want to call try await and then we want this to be vmodel.fetch users and then any errors that we get we'll print that here 
and then finally on our for each we want to use vm.users so we can listen to those updates so this function that we had here called fetch users down below we can actually remove this because we don't need it anymore so as you can see now our view model looks a lot simpler and all it's doing is simply listening to the changes and reacting to what happens within our source of truth so let's just go into our canvas and then we'll run this again to see if it works all good and as you can see it's all fine like it was before so this is perfect cool so we've managed to get the structure in place using mvvm but one more thing i want to discuss is how we can actually push data from our users list to another screen well in order to do this we first of all need to create and isolate our views in swift uis because you don't really want to nest your views like this so you can see here that i've actually got my list item directly within this view what we should actually do is isolate this out into its own independent component so let's create two new views and called user info view and user detail view and we'll start off by extracting this bit here out into its own view so let's do that now okay cool so now we have our user info view which is what we're going to use to display the user information like you saw before now the only thing we're passing into this view here is only the name now you may be wondering why am i not passing the whole user object well if you actually look at our application if we just go back to our list and just run it you'll notice that we actually only need the name so there's actually no point of passing in the whole user model into this object you might as well just keep it simple right so we only pass in the name and use that within this view and then we also change our preview to display the view as its component so now we've done that with the user info view the next thing we want to do is build our user detail view so let's do that now okay cool so our user detail view on the other hand is a bit different so in here we actually do pass in the whole user model and that's because if you actually scroll down you'll notice that we're actually using extensions here to show different sections of our users information and we want to access each and every single property within our user now the last thing we want to do is have a bunch of properties here for the name email address and so on and so forth because you know you'd have a crazy initializer so instead we just pass in the whole user object and let's access the properties that we actually need as you can see here within these extensions but you'll notice that we actually have an issue here and our preview is actually expecting us to pass in some kind of user now what i like to do is i like to actually create an extension on my model with some dummy data so that I can easily pass this into my swift ui previews if i want to so let's go back into our user model and we'll do this now and as you can see, I've got my dummy data here on my user. So now when I want to access this, I can just use a dot notation to say dot dummy. So let's do that now. And if we actually look at our preview, you'll now see that we see our information. And I'm just going to change the layout of this. Cool. and now this looks like our component which is perfect so if you just scroll up if you just scroll up to our view you can see that we just simply got a scroll view with a v stack and we're just displaying information that we've broken out into individual computed properties just to make it more cleaner because we don't want to you know have a crazy long view with loads of information that's hard to read so i like to split out my views like this cool and if you want to learn more about stats you can check out my video in the swift ui processions playlist called stats in swift ui so let's actually use our new views within our content view so if you just go back to your content view rather than us having this whole v stack instead what we're going to do is use our user info view so let's do that now cool as you can see this now looks a lot neater and we also have our view logic moved out into its own component so we can easily reuse this if we wanted to now if you want to actually push to a screen we need to actually use a navigation link if you want to learn more about navigation link then check out my video navigate to screens with navigation link and navigation view in swift ui and we actually want to use a navigation link here and we can use this since our view is wrapped around a navigation view because 
you can only use a navigation link if your view is within a navigation view. So this will allow us to actually push to a screen. Now let's actually do this now and then we'll break it down. So what we want to do is use a navigation link and then we want to use the option where you have a destination and a label. So the destination that we're going to go to is our user detail view. So let's do that now. And then for our user detail view, we want to pass in our user. And then for our label, we want this to be our user info view, because that's what we want to display on the screen. Cool. And if you look at our application now, you'll see that it looks fine. But one thing that you'll notice is that we actually have the separators back in and we also have this carrot now why is these two things happening well first of all let's start off with the separators well in our user info view we actually are said that we want to apply the separator on the list row which is in this view here but what's actually going on is that with swift ui navigation link is actually its own view so it actually technically doesn't have the list row separators hidden on it so in order to actually hide the list row separator on all of the views within our list, we actually want to apply this onto our for each. So any children within it automatically get that style. So let's do that now. And now you should notice that the separator is gone on all of its children. So within our user info view, let's just remove the style to remove the list row separator because it's not needed anymore. Okay, cool. So the next thing that we have is this carrot. So why do we have the carrot here and it's not within the gray area? Well, again, we said within our user info view that we want to apply a background onto the V stack within the user info view, not the navigation link, which adds in this carrot. So how can we get around this? Well, there is a hack at the time of this recording. Um, obviously, when I recorded this, WWDC 22 is coming up pretty soon, so it might be resolved. But as of right now, what we can do is actually set our navigation link as a background on our user info view to get around this. So let's do that now. So we just move this out. And then if we just use the background modifier, so within our background, what we want to do here is just pass in a navigation link. And then we want to use the one where you have a title string like so. And it's going to set that to an empty string. And then our destination is going to be our user detail user. So we just set that in here like so. And then we can remove our navigation link because we don't need that no more. And then what we want to do is set the opacity on this to be zero so you don't see it. Cool. So now let's run this. And as you can see now, our view doesn't have this carrot on the end. And if you actually tap on it, you'll notice that you're able to push to a screen like so, and you get that feedback that you've tapped on an item and it's now taking to that screen. And we get the back button because our navigation link is within our navigation view, we're able to go back and we can actually pull back from the edges as well. So this is all great. Okay, cool. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.